Hey, 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 everybody. Today we're talking about that thing that makes a lot of people mad, and that is no-shows. Today's podcast episode is called No-Shows No More because nobody likes a no-show appointment. We're going to talk about that right now, so stick around. You're listening to Marketing Tips with Melissa podcast. <laughs> Welcome to Marketing Tips with Melissa Podcast. And now, your host, Melissa Jakubovic. Okay, when it comes to setting appointments, sometimes there are people who do not respect our time and do not show up for appointments. This is so frustrating. If you are a coach or a healer or you're setting up a discovery call with someone to see if it's a potential fit to become a client and you set the time on your calendar and they do not show up, it can be infuriating. I know for me as a single mom and I run two companies and there's a lot going on in my life that it takes a lot of effort to be at my desk at the exact time to start the meeting on time. Sometimes it's through Zoom, so I've got to get my hair ready or maybe, you know, I've put on a little lipstick or I've got some earrings or maybe I'm out and about doing some errands or I'm taking my kids somewhere and I have a meeting in the middle of the day and I just have to rush to get back home and get the kids situated and walk the dog and do all these things and sit down and lo and behold that person doesn't show up. It's infuriating. It is so frustrating and it makes me feel why does that person not respect my time? Now back in the day I used to have a lot of no-shows. Now it doesn't happen that often and that's because I have put a lot of things in place to prevent that from happening. So if you're getting a lot of no-shows, this is a learning opportunity to see what you can add into your process to prevent that from happening. And that's what we're going to talk about here right now. So you might still get some no-shows if you do all these things that we're going to discuss but you will minimize them. We can't control everything, right? We can't control all the people in our lives and things do happen, but this will minimize the no-shows that are happening for you. So the very first thing you can do is you can put a warning on the booking page. So I use Calendly. That's my calendar that I use to set up for people booking in with me. And this might not just be a discovery call. This could be a strategy session. This could be an important meeting. It could be a lot of things. And in that booking link that I send, I ask a few questions and at the bottom, I let them know that I have a no-show policy. Now you can make your no-show policy whatever you want it to be. My no-show policy is if you are a no-show and I don't hear about it within 24 hours, we will not be doing business together because I want to work with people who respect my time. And if someone doesn't respect my time, I know right away that they're not a good fit for me. They might be a great fit for someone else, but they're not a good fit for me. And when you have boundaries on your time or in any area of your life, you're going to set good boundaries. You're going to get good results. And that's a boundary that I set years ago. If you don't show up for our appointment and you don't communicate about it, we are 100% not a good fit and I will not be doing business with you. So you can put that policy or any variation of that on your booking page. Now, also on the booking page, I have some questions that I want them to fill out. If the person doesn't take the time to fill out the questions, I know right then and there, they're not a good fit. So these questions could be simple and related to whatever the call is about, or if it was an application, you want to make sure they're a great fit before they even get on the call, you could have a little bit more complex questions or longer questions. I wouldn't recommend having this be you know, 10 questions. It's too much. People don't have time. They just want to book a call on your calendar and move on. And if there's 10 questions, they may get discouraged and move on. But that's okay. If that's what you're looking for and that's part of your boundaries, of course you can do that. But you know, three to five questions I think is a good, a good amount right there. And you can ask one of the questions, will you respect my time and show up to this appointment? Don't be scared to ask direct questions. I like to guide people on what my boundaries are by just telling them. So on the booking page, I tell them I don't work with you if you're a no-show. And one of the questions is, are you going to respect my time and show up to the appointment? And if they say no, or I'm not sure, I just cancel the call and I don't even worry about it. And if they say yes, I'm going to hold them to that high standard. 
When it comes to running a business that is actually profitable, many entrepreneurs find themselves making costly mistakes and leave thousands of dollars on the table each month. Join my Get Client Sales Sprint right now. In this interactive sales sprint, I'll challenge you daily for three weeks with actions that get you closer to your next client and guide you through all the steps you need to follow in order to have a business that actually grows your bank account. If you aren't profitable, you have an expensive hobby, and it's time to change that now. Time to pay yourself the big bucks, my dear. Get yourself into the Get Client Sales Sprint today at GetClientsSalesSprint.com. See you there. Another thing you can do just from the get-go is to list who this call is for and who this call is not for. So if you say, I'm looking, let's say you're a graphic designer and you want to work with women entrepreneurs who make six figures or more, you can ask before they book the call, are you a woman entrepreneur? And you can also ask either an open-ended question, what is your monthly revenue? Or you can give them some options and you would say, you know, my annual income is this range to this range or this range to this range and let them answer the questions. Based on how they answer, you can either hold the call or email them and say, you know what, I feel like we're not a good fit. Thank you for booking a call with me, but I'm just not going to hold this call. And now you don't have to worry about it. So that was just an example, but there could be a whole bunch of reasons why someone would be or would not be a good fit for you in that call, depending on what the call is about as well. And so come up with questions and just ask that. And don't feel uncomfortable about canceling the call. Not only are you saving yourself time, but you're respecting their time as well. There's no use for them getting on a call with you if you know right off the bat that they're not a good fit for you. Now, the other things that you can do are after someone books a call is you can send follow-up emails. So I like to send a follow-up email the same day if the call is in the afternoon or the day before in the afternoon if the call is the next morning. So let's say we have a call set Wednesday at 10 a.m. I would send a reminder on Tuesday around 4 p.m. Or if we have the call Thursday at noon, I would send the reminder Thursday at 8 a.m. And just let them know, hey, this is where we're having our call. Just wanted to remind you. And if it's on Zoom, I even give them the Zoom link. Because one of the reasons why you may have a no-show is because they can't find the link to get on the call with you. Or if it's a phone call, they don't know where the phone number is. So make it as easy as possible for them. Send the email and give them the connection on where you're going to meet. Now, sometimes you can set this up automatically in your email system or on your calendar system. So sometimes you can even put a little check mark and say, send an email reminder an hour before or 24 hours before. You can do that, and I recommend you do both of those. If you don't want to do that and you don't, or you don't have the option to do that, what I like to do for some of my appointments is while I'm booking the appointment, I send an email right away and I say, thank you for booking the appointment with me. This is the time. This is where we're going to meet. This is how we're going to do it, blah, 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 blah. And I hit send. And then I write another email same exact information pretty much, and then I send it later. You can schedule the send. And almost all email clients have this. Gmail has it. Zoho has it. Those are the two I use. Um, So you can just schedule the send. So I schedule the send for a specific day, and then I don't have to remember. I don't have to think about it the day of, especially if they're booking, let's say, a week out. You're going to forget a week from now that you need to remind them. It's too much. Get it off your plate. Get it out of your mind. Set that email reminder right then and just schedule it out and it'll go out automatically. You only run into trouble with that, and that's happened to me once or twice. If someone does say, hey, I need to reschedule, and then you need to remember to change the automated email or that scheduled out email that you already preset to the new date. But sending up those follow-up emails is going to be really important. The other thing you can do, which is similar to that, is follow-up text messages. If they've given you their phone number, sometimes inside your calendar um, booking, there's a way to do this automatically, and you can send a text message reminder. A lot of times people are checking their text messages more than they're checking their emails. You know, they always have their phone on them. You probably always have your phone on you. So when you get a text message reminder, it's like, oh yeah, good. Thanks for the reminder. I almost forgot. So that's going to help minimize your no-shows as well. And the last thing you can do if you want is don't offer free strategy sessions or free discovery sessions. Any of those sessions that you're holding where you're having no-shows, don't allow them to be free. Charge for them. And 
if it's a discovery call, it could be a paid discovery call that they then get reimbursed when they show up. Or if they purchase while they're on that call, you can apply that to their program. So for example, you wanted to have a discovery session with someone, it's maybe a 30 minute call, you're gonna charge them just $10, it's not a big deal. If they don't wanna pay the $10, well there you go, they're not a good fit and move on. But if they're willing to pay the $10, then they show up to the call because they've paid the $10, you'll give them the $10 back at the end of the call. This will prevent them from being a no-show. And if they wanna purchase your program while you're on the call with them, you'll apply the $10 to that call. Now I just said $10 because it was the first number that came to my head. But I know that there are people who charge $50 for their discovery sessions. I even have a client who charges $250 for her discovery session. And that will be applied to her $5,000 program if they purchase or they will get that $250 back. So these are a few options that you can do. Like I said, not everything is going to be foolproof. Things might fall through the cracks. There might be someone who has an emergency. Someone has to cancel at the last minute. Life happens. So I recommend that you be open-minded, you be compassionate, you show empathy, and you give people the benefit of the doubt. However, if they totally blow you off, they're a no-show and they have no communication, you do not have an obligation to create a rescheduled appointment for them. You don't have to feel bad about it. It's your business and you set the boundaries. So take it with a grain of salt, whatever I said, do what feels good, take out what doesn't and see if that helps your no-shows. And I hope it does help and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Tips with Melissa podcast at www.marketingtipswithmeliss.com. Oh wait, before you go, I've got a super special invitation for you, so listen up. Join thousands of spiritual women, entrepreneurs, coaches, healers, and business owners in a cozy community to learn effective and aligned strategies to grow and scale your business through organic marketing and so much more. And for a limited time, when you join my free community, you will also get a free copy of my book, Abundance of Aligned Clients and Consistent Income. Join the Spiritual Women Entrepreneurs community at spiritualwomenentrepreneurs.com to claim all your free gifts. See you on the inside.